Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera and hello everyone. How do you do? I believe most of you are waiting for this video. So, I'm Cikgu Hasnita from SMK Baganjaya bring to you Newton Universal Law of Gravitation Part 4. Okay students, so in this lesson we are going to discuss the fourth learning standard which is to justify the importance of knowing the values of gravitational acceleration of the planets in the solar system. So if you remember in our previous lesson, we have learned how to determine gravitational acceleration from this formula of G equal GM divide R squared. Do you still remember what this G represents? Yes, it is gravitational acceleration, where G, this capital G is gravitational constant and M is the mass of Earth and R squared refers to the the radius of the earth. For your information, this is a universal force. Gravitational force is a universal force. So this formula is not only applicable to measure gravitational acceleration on the earth's surface, but it is also can be used to find the gravitational acceleration on the surface of other objects. For example, a planet, a gravitational acceleration on the moon and also gravitational acceleration on the surface of the sun. Where if you are looking for gravitational acceleration for all these bodies, so this M refer to the mass of each planet, the mass of the moon, the mass of the sun, where this R refers to the radius for each. Okay, so again, this formula not only applicable to find gravitational acceleration on the Earth's surface, but also for any other planets in the entire solar system. All right, students, so let us continue with the first activity for today. This is activity 3.6, which you will find from your textbook on page 86. So we are going to compare what will be the difference in the gravitational acceleration for the moon, the sun, and all other planets in the solar system. So we are going to play with all these planets. So I hope you are good to go. Let's begin with our first slide. Okay, so I believe you all know this is a sun. The second is the, that is the moon. How about the third? Okay, that one is the, planet which is closest to the sun so it is very good it is mercury so we are going to find what is the gravitational acceleration uh, in each surface of these bodies by applying this formula of g equal gm divided by r squared and this is the value for the gravitational constant so are you ready okay let's check on sun first Okay, this is the mass of the sun and this is its radius. Can you find the value for G? So I hope you are working with your calculator and help me to fill up this table. Okay, so what will be your answer? Okay, so for sun, the gravitational acceleration with this mass and with this radius from G equal to Gm divided R squared, it will be very good, 274. 0.01 meter per second squared. Now try on the moon. This is the mass of the moon as given and this is its radius okay, from its center to the surface. Okay, so the gravitational acceleration on the moon is, yes, it is 1.62 meter per second squared. Okay, how about mercury? Can you give a try on mercury? With a mass of 3.29 times 10 to the power of 23 and a radius of 2.44 times 10 6. So it will give us a gravitational acceleration of yes 3.69 meter per second. Easy, right? Okay, now try on the next three. Okay, first, can you guess the name of this planet? Okay, this is. Venus, yes, very good. And this is Earth. While the third one is the red planet. Yeah, it is Mars. Okay, so this is the mass of Venus with its radius. So do we the Earth 
and Mars. So again, try to fill up all this table with the gravitational acceleration for each according to this formula of G equal GM divide R squared. So I hope you can familiar yourself with a calculator playing with all this number. Okay, so what will be the value for Venus? Yes, it is 8.87. Very good. 8.87. And this is for Earth. You will find it is 9.81 meter per second. How about Mars? Yeah, the gravitational acceleration on the surface of Mars will be 3.71 meter per second squared. Okay, now let's check on the next three. Okay, students, so are you doing good so far? Okay, let us continue with the next three planets. Can you recognize our planets on top? Yeah, this is Jupiter. Very good. How about the second? Yes, that is Saturn. Then this one will be Uranus. Yes. So this is the mass and radius for each. Again, where you have to find the gravitational acceleration. So how about Jupiter? What is the gravitational acceleration for Jupiter? So again, by applying this formula, G equal GM divide R squared. So for Jupiter, it will be 25.80 meter per second squared. How about Saturn? Okay, so it will be 10.45 meter per second squared. And for Uranus, it will be, yes, with a mass of 8.68 times 10, 25, and radius of 2.85 times 10, 7. So it will give a gravitational acceleration of, very good, 8. 0.69. Okay, now let's check on our last planet. Okay, this is the furthest planet from our solar system, from the sun. Okay, we call it as, yes. Again, what is the name of this planet? Yeah, so this is Neptune. Okay, with a mass of 1.02 times 10 to the power of 26 and a radius of 2.47 times 10 power of 7. So this will give a gravitational acceleration on the surface of Neptune of, very good, 11.15 meter per second squared. So I hope you are happy completing all this table with the gravitational acceleration for each planet in our solar system. So let's check what's coming next. Well, we have completed this table with the value for gravitational acceleration on each surface of the planet in the solar system by using this equation of G equal GM divide R squared. So students, if you uh, arrange them in a sequence from the lowest gravitational acceleration to the highest, so it will be started with Mercury with the lowest gravitational accelerations of 1.69 and the highest will be Jupiter. Remember the value for Jupiter earlier? So you may check back from the table. Okay. And let us continue with these questions. Okay. Number one, which planet has the largest gravitational acceleration? So do you remember what is the name of this planet? So it will be Jupiter. Very good. And second, which planet has the smallest gravitational acceleration? Can okay, look at this picture. So it refers to, yes, Mercury. Okay, how about the next question? Number three, which planet now has the closest value to the gravitational acceleration on Earth? On Earth is 9.81. So look back at your table. Which one has the closest uh, value or the closest magnitude? So it will be, yes, it will be Saturn. Okay, and number four, what factors determine the value of the gravitational acceleration of the planet? Remember the formula from G equal GM divide R squared. So it will be depend on the mass of the planet and its radius. Okay. 
Okay, students. So how about to take a short break? So we will be right back after this. Don't go away. Okay, students. Okay, now let's continue with the second activity, 3.7. In your textbook, it will be on page 86. Okay, so in this activity, we are going to discuss what is the importance of knowledge on gravitational acceleration of the planets in a space exploration and also in a continuity of life. Okay, let's take at the first part. Okay, this is all the importance of knowing the value for gravitational acceleration on each surface of the planet in the solar system when doing space exploration. Number one, it is to keep the satellite in its orbit. Okay, second, this gravity influences the path taken by everything which is traveling through space. And the third importance is to slow down the spacecraft during landing. So by all the calculations, so they will know how to estimate the velocity when they are about to land on a surface of the planet in the universe. Okay, well, what will be the effect of gravity uh, in nature? Number one, gravity causes rain to fall. And second, it also causes a dissipation of heat. Gravity also separates air and water. And last but not least, it will affect the flow of our body fluid. Either we are in a low gravity area or in a high gravity area. And now, this will be our third and final activity for today, where we are going to collect or gather some information on what will be the effect of gravity on human growth. So students, if you are good to go, let us check on this table. So we are going to discuss on this factor and what will be the effect of low gravity and high gravity towards them. Okay, the first one, difference in density. The density here refers to the human body density. Okay, so what happened to our body density in a low gravity area? Yes, our body density will be decreases. While in a high gravity area, the human body density will be increases. Okay. While on bone fragility, how do you think gravity affects our bone fragility? According to a study or research which is done on astronauts, so most of them suffer bone fragile when they are away out there at the outer space for months, for years, where the bone become more fragile due to losses of mineral, for example, calciums. And this will lead to a health problem which is called osteoporosis. While for a high gravity, until today, there is no significant changes occur on the bone fragility. So what about the next factor? How does gravity affect our size of lungs? So what do you think happened to our size of lungs in a low gravity? Remember, students, in a low gravity area where the pressure is also low, which means our body pressure inside is higher. So what happens to our lung? Yes, it will be increased and expanded. While in a high gravity where the pressure is also higher, means the pressure inside is lower, so it will give a pressure to our lung where it will be contracted or decreases in size. Okay? While for the third, uh, for the fourth factor, blood circulatory system. What do you think the effect of low gravity on our blood circulatory system? So this will cause us our blood to collect it at the upper part of our body. While on a high gravity area, what happened to our blood flow? Yes, it will be collected at our low part of body and very difficult for them to flow upwards against this high gravity. Okay, well, the last factor, blood pressure. What do you think the effect of a gravity on blood pressure? In a low gravity area, the blood pressure will be lower and so do our heart rate. Meanwhile, in a high gravity area, the, lower, uh, the blood pressure will be 
higher. And again, same thing happened to our heart rate. Okay. And these are more effects on gravity on human growth, as you can read. When the skin becomes thinner, people will feel anxiety. Some of uh, individual experience space strong as in car sick or seasick and loss coordination system the bone become less dense moreover it can weaken human immune body system and also affect the vision it can cause us an impaired vision blurred vision increases in a height for two inches this is normally happen for those in a low gravity area and it also causes the face to be swollen and shrinken the feet. And last but not least, it causes the blood pump from the heart at a lower rate through the whole body. So I guess that's all to do with uh, gravitational acceleration on uh, the other surface of the planets in the solar system. So it is a very short topic and a very simple learning standard to be understand. So I hope you are clear with all the discussion. And don't forget to join me again in our fifth part in this lesson. We will describe the centripetal force, another interesting topics to be discovered in the motion of satellite and planet system. Okay, students, so I hope this video helps you to understand gravitational acceleration and see you again in the next video. Assalamualaikum and bye-bye for now.